my top 50 albums of 2022. This is numbers of 40 to 31, and we'll be continuing this list all throughout the week. So let me just jump right into number 40. So at number 40, I have Zero Hour with Agenda 21. This was one of those bands I'd never heard of before. I saw this album listed as a new release, and I thought to myself, hey, it looks pretty cool. Kind of has that like sci-fi or futuristic theme, and I checked it out. And I thought it was pretty good. You know, it's on the list, so <laughs> it's a uh, progressive metal. And the thing that stood out for me, it was um, just the guitar riffs were they were kind of complex, but they used like odd time signatures. But at the same time, they were repetitive enough so that it was like memorable to me, and the memory didn't get lost. So the album starts with this 14 minute song called "Demo Side," and I think all these songs are together with like one like a cohesive story. But Demoside uh, kind of has like the clean guitar, then it kind of gets distorted, but it's melodic. They get heavy at times. And it's one of those songs, you know, it's 14 minutes long, but they're changing it enough so that it's interesting, but they kind of it's repetitive enough so that it's memorable. And that, that's what I like about it. The album has uh, six songs in total. Uh, they're all like varying lengths. Uh, you know, they play with different time signatures and tempos. Other songs are like Technocracy, it's it just heavy, and uh, songs like Stigmata, very heavy, it's experimental, it's futuristic, overall, good album. Number 39, Demon Hunter with Exile. So this is a band that I've been following for a while now. They were one of the more popular bands in that whole like Christian metal genre. They're kind of metalcore, but they're not like exactly the same as other bands like Norma Jean, August Burns Red, As I Lay Dying. On this album, they are continuing to evolve their sound. They got some really heavy stuff. So, for example, Defense Mechanism with Max Cavalera. Just one of the most brutal and vicious tracks they've done in a while. They're starting to like delve into like these like grunge territory. Um, some songs sound like Alice in Chains and that do not for the first time ever. They have a few guests here like uh, from Judas Priest. They have guests from Evergrey. So... It's just a nice rounded out album. So this is my number 39. Number 38, Lamb of God with Omens. This band is very consistent. They always put out a good album. They kind of rarely stray from their core sound. It's groove metal. It's very complex and heavy. The songs are fast and brutal. The vocals are harsh. And, um, you know, they use like different styles in the vocals. But within all this heaviness, the songs have these catchy choruses and that makes them memorable. It's a band that's very unique. You know, you when you hear them, you hear a few notes from this band, and you know this is the Lamb of God. One of my favorite songs is Omens. That was one of the singles, but I think on this song, the band shows where they are right now. It's heavy. It's memorable. The song has lots of technical guitar playing, complex drum patterns, um, dark and heavy vocals. My other two favorites on the album were the last two songs because they were kind of a little more experimental, I guess you would call it. Denial Mechanism, that's just super fast, it's heavy. Reminded me of um, that Pantera song, Fucking Hostile. And it's just really great, it's just fast and to the point. And the last song, September Song, where they kind of slow down a little, get a little more experimental, they use some different guitar tones, kind of create new, sound, new uh, sound textures, new atmospheres. Overall, solid album. My number 37, Sabaton, The War to End All Wars. So when I first started listening to metal as a teenager, one of the first albums I bought was Iron Maiden Somewhere in Time. And I remember looking at the track list and I'm seeing like one of the songs titled Alexander the Great. And I'm thinking to myself, that's oh, really cool. Like this metal band is writing about history. You know, I was in high school at the time. So my first experience with that. So I mentioned that because this band Sabaton is like that, but <laughs> as a band, it's just they took this idea and they went with it because... Everything they write about are like real history events. They write about wars, just things in the past. And just this is a band that like teaches you history. And I thought it's really cool. It's a band that I didn't, I didn't really get into uh, at first that much because you know, I wasn't really into power metal as much. But And this album, when I first um, you know, reviewed it, I liked it. I thought it was good. I didn't really give it a super like enthusiastic uh, review. But when I revisited it, you know, for, for to prepare for this list, I liked it a lot. You know, I think 
I started to notice things I didn't at first. You know, the guitar riffs are just really great. They sound good. And the vocals are really perfect for this type of music because, you know, the vocalist kind of like sounds like he's like leading like troops into battle. And this is one of the biggest power metal bands in Sweden right now. And one has grown on me over the years. Um, on this album, my favorite songs, uh, Christmas Truce, The Unkillable Soldier. They're, they're great. I think just overall, it's a really good album. The songs are interesting and just the songs are very good. Number 36, I have Skull Fist with Paid in Full. So Skull Fist is one of those bands that, you know, I listen to and immediately makes me think of like metal from the 80s. The time when metal was like in its infancy and people were just trying new things for the first time to see what sounds right. There weren't all these different like subgenres at the time. It was just heavy music. And this is one of those bands that is a new band, but they're like reviving that early metal sound. If you need to put a label on them, you can call them speed metal or traditional heavy metal. But I would compare them to a band like Judas Priest, Anvil, Armored Saint, Metal Church. Uh, you know, those types of bands that were very heavy in the early 80s. They're like not exactly thrash, but just like really heavy music. So it's a good album. It's not long, eight songs, 33 minutes. The guitar sounds very good. They have that heavy, distorted tone. It kind of captures that 80s metal sound. The vocals are more on like the high-pitched side. My number 36, Skull Fist, Paid in Full. Number 35, Voivod with Synchro Anarchy. Anarchy. So it's a band I've been listening to for a while now. I like them. They're just very different. You know, they get labeled as like thrash or progressive, but they like defy all labels. If bands were movies, uh, they would be like science fiction movies. You know, a movie about interdimensional travel, a movie about other worlds. You hear a few seconds of this band and you know it's Voivod. This album was probably the best they have done in a while. You know, I've heard other channels say it is their best since like the late 80s, early 90s. You know, those classic albums, Nothing Face, The Outer Limits of that time. The guitars just sound like technological machines from the future. They play guitar riffs like no other band. You hear a lot of those like quote unquote like Voivod guitar riffs. They kind of play them on like the upper part of the neck and they use these like odd time signatures. The rhythms just go through different changes. But at the same time, they make it catchy and memorable. Favorite songs, Planet Eaters and Mind Clock. It's just an album that takes you on a space ride through alternate dimensions. It's Voivod and they're just like doing it really good. Number 34. Cave In with Heavy Pendulum. It's a band that's kind of hard to describe. They're new to me. You know, I've never listened to them before. I know they've been around for a while. They get called stoner, sludge metal, progressive metal, but they go through different styles. I think this is the first time I ever heard the band. They reminded me of uh, Mastodon sometimes with like sludgy guitar riffs and they kind of change the vocal styles at times. I like the song uh, New Reality. That's the opening track. It's... That one's really heavy, kind of like how I just described, like Mastodon. But then other times they're more atmospheric and they have a more of a 90s alternative sound. And sometimes they're more psychedelic. It's just one of those albums, you listen to it, you, you look at the cover, you got the, the whole planet there, and it kind of takes you on a space trip. Number 33, Dark Throne with Astral Fortress. This is a man that... I haven't really listened to um, that much in the past couple of years. You know, I got into them when they released Eternal Hails last year. So I said, hey, let me check this out. And I thought it was good because I'm not really into that, like, black metal that's, like, super fast and the super, like, black beats and the screaming and all that. And, like, this was, like, slower, like, darkier, doomier, just the guitar riffs reminded me of, like, Black Sabbath. And this album, they're kind of doing something similar, but they did it better than they did on the Eternal Hails album. Like, the sound is, like, darker. They create lots of eerie sound textures. They take their songs to different levels with different twists and turns. All the songs are, like, different lengths. So the longest is 10 minutes. The shortest is 2 minutes. They experiment with atmosphere and heaviness. Not like their old albums. I know the ones that, like, people love, but they're really raw production sound. Um, this one is colder. It's It's frightening. You know, it's just one of, this is one of the few black metal bands that I'm, you know, I'm a new fan of. And for that reason, it is uh, deserving to make this list. 
Next, uh, number 32, here's a, a new album, a Threshold with Dividing Lines. Um, I uh, never heard of this band. I know they're kind of bigger in the UK, I guess, but they were recommended to me by the Green Man Channel. Um, they they are, are a progressive metal band, similar to Dream Theater. You know, they've been around a long time, and this is just like a late entry, you know, came out just a couple weeks ago. They have a, they have their own sound. Sometimes they sound like Dream Theater, but in general, sometimes they sound like themselves. It's not a full uh, concept album, but they have this like recurring theme of the, like the future of society. Um, my favorite song is the first song, Haunted. This is all, the first single I heard. It's kind of like metalcore, new metal, but it's just very melodic. The vocals are very clean. The chorus is memorable. You know, it has this like, catchy line, like, what doesn't kill you leaves you haunted. I really like that. I like these, like, palm-muted riffs in the verses. That really sounds really good. I like the breakdown. It gets more atmospheric. And they do, like, lots of different things. You know, you hear the guitars very well. You hear the bass very well. And in general, this album is just a solid album. All the songs are very good. Number 31, uh, Queen Drake with Digital Noise Alliance. Uh, when I first did this review, I wasn't like super enthusiastic about it. I thought it was really good, but after time, you know, giving it a few more listens, it is probably the best of the Todd Latour era. Like they captured that classic sound of albums like The Warning and Rage for Order, but they took it to the new level. Like this is the future of the band. Like this is one of the few like legacy bands that are able to sound fresh, but at the same time able to like bring back their classic sound. And they they really did it well on this album. Some of my favorite songs are In Extremist. You got the melodic guitars, Todd Latour just giving a perful, perfect uh, vocal performance for the band. Lost in Sorrow just sounds similar to an album like Empire. It's very melodic, but still retains that classic sound. The Ballad Forest, um, at first I didn't like it. I think in my original review I said it was like, ah, I didn't like this, but it's actually really good. It, it just one grew on me a lot, so... The Forest is a great song, just lots of great melody. My favorite song is still Tormentum. I said this in my original review, but seven and a half minute epic goes through many progressive twists and turns. Really great guitar sound. It's dark, it's futuristic, and this is just a great song. So please like and subscribe so you don't miss um, the rest of this countdown. I will be back with 30 to uh, 21, and I'll see you tomorrow.